Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vato speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the profit not the re -ups. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown from the bay During an interview with the Morning Hustle podcast, speaking on comments made by Joe Buttons on his podcast regarding his responsibility and accountability or lack thereof as a CEO after pretty much the depletion of his whole new 1017 record label roster, Gucci Mane would say, and a lot of people have opinions, right? One of those people were Joe Button, and he said some things about your label and the responsibility he felt like you had for your artists. Now, you've been in situations yourself and had to fight through situations. He was saying that you shouldn't have given some of these people a chance and have done background checks. Wow. What do you think? Because you, again, you were in a situation but was able to overcome. Do you think that that's something that should be held against them? I think that's like an unfair, you know what I'm saying, for him to say that. But I guess he's entitled to his opinion. But to me, who else going to give him a chance? You know what I'm saying? Like. Now, I want to discuss that with y'all a little bit later. But first, I want to talk about the day that I think he lost his best artist, maybe ever. I'm stunned. Stay there and not worry about money. And these niggas always want to judge it. They don't go on there, bro. That's a party. What's the job that we had on that function? Like three years of living, we party. So we try to even know what I'm calling. It's all time to get dressed. Free trade. Ain't she playing? Yeah. I want I, I want I want to hear this nigga with Drake, man. Call that nigga Drake, man. This is what was posted by rapper Gucci Mane on his Instagram page. It shows a picture of Big Scar along with the caption that reads, "This hurts." I knew I, I don't know what it was. I always knew I was gonna be rich. Cause there's something in the back of my head. I was talking about I was gonna be something. No matter what I did, I was gonna be the best at. No matter what it was. I'm, I'm, I got a face on double R, like my face on double R. If you speak on double R, you're going to see my face. So like on some What's double R for people that don't know? Rich and Ruthless. Okay. Rich and Ruthless, this is what we pushing. Like this, it was on some screen shit, but now we on some music shit. Yeah, this on the camera. I don't live my nigga two, three, man. Yeah, like, like she rapping, you hear me? Glocks on Glocks, you hear me? Yeah, quit playing. Glocks on Glocks on Choppers on top. This shit customized. Ain't shit regular. We ain't no regular ass young nigga. Yeah, hear me? New Tennessee, your state. You know, know kicking those. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, about hold on. I'm talking about certified I'm talking about certified sniper. Certified, you hear me? We gonna come chop nigga whole block, street, whatever. I'm talking about, hey, man, get that camera over here, man. This shit chopping. Hey, yo, so I want to fuck that dude. Throw a lot of heads, all right? Hear me? It's the beam, bro. I'm thinking somebody in a tooth. Yeah, and you know what's going on. on Chopper gang, gang, bitch. Yeah. Because she's of OG. Fatties out here, yeah. Yeah. Double R gang, man. Oh, Chopper gang oh, shit, man. You know what's going on, man. Oh, I just oh, pulled the gun oh, like that. Oh, Why you let me do that? After a near fatal accident while driving a stolen car down Shelby Drive, a situation that most people probably wouldn't survive at just 16 years old, and what he would later describe as something earned and not given. Big Scar emerged, not as a casualty, but as a star. I ain't no hard like shawty, you me. Fuck all these robbers, my trailer like hell. Carry like this, turn it up on you belt. Move me up, this little nigga can help. Fuck from the front and I'm turning the back. I stay with the K. I'm in the dupe, I'm moving your bag. Whoa. Big Frog's on. Let's go. Oh, uh, whoa. Several years later, with only a $220 budget, 20 for recording, and 200 to shoot the visual, Big Scar released his first song, Catch a Play. Since its upload back in December 2019, the track has garnered over 19 million views. After a cosign from a well known YouTuber, the breakout moment will lead to an almost fate like situation with a call from Gucci Man who personally sought him out through Big Scar's cousin and recent 1017 signee, 
Pooh Shiesty. Yeah, yeah. Now being from Memphis, bro, like, like, why did you decide to go 1017? Like, did you grow up listening to Gucci? Hey, yeah, yeah, my mom favorite rap. Damn. I mean, my mom used to ride around listening to 745 and all this shit, like. I'm gonna be drunk as hell, I gotta drive on home, we bumping this shit. Yeah. I'm flying down the street bumping this cell for the back. I'm about 12. <laughs> When I say a star was born, I don't say that lightly. Big Scar's debut mixtape, Big Grim Reaper, would go on to earn gold certification. And in May of 2021, Big Scar would also climb to the top of Billboard's Breakthrough 25 chart, ranking as the fastest rising new artist, though his competition was formidable, with artists like Bankroll Freddy coming in at number 8 and Icewear Vezo coming in at number 9. With the release of the Big Grim Reaper in April of 2021, it would fuel a surge in his popularity, driving 30 million more on-demand audio streams in March alone, which was a significant leap from the 7 million increase that he saw the prior month in February. The mixtape would also have an impressive debut on Rolling Stone's Top 200, landing at the number 26 spot with over 22 million first week streams. I feel like once this tape come out, there's gonna be a lot of more people like, the one thing I like about this tape about Scott and I'm so proud of, he mm -hmm. only featured me, Fujiano, uh, Pooh Shyster, his partner, Baby K, who been rapping for him and got him in rapping, and, and my other artist, Enchanted. He did, it, it's so in-house and so just, his expression of him, I'm like, everything else gonna come after that, and everybody, I know everybody gonna jump on him after this tape come out. I'm glad he did it like that. Bro, man, he don't need no help. Okay. No help. All his, all his crew, everything he did was just his crew. No big features. The only big feature he got is us. Right I'm now. Gonna, gonna see, I'm going to be waiting on this car. I've been waiting on this car team to drop for so long. This shit, just so I can just, so we can just show everybody, like, y'all yeah. thought Cool Giano and Two Shots was hard. Like, bro, this shit, this shit is serious. Like, Scott is serious. It's one of the hardest out there I, 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 I ever saw. We are following more breaking news tonight. This is about a Memphis rapper connected to Young Dolph. Rapper Big Scar has died. This is what was posted by rapper Gucci Mane on his Instagram page. It shows a picture of Big Scar along with the caption that reads, This hurts. I'm going to miss you. We are hearing the rapper died today. He was signed to Gucci Mane's label. Right now, we are working to learn how he died. Big Scar was about to go on tour with Key Glock next year. He was just 22 years old. Just as quickly as the 22-year-old Big Scar rose to prominence, his untimely death came just as swiftly, occurring only 615 days after the release of his gold-certified mixtape, Big Grim Reaper. Gucci Mane, who had grown into a mentor for Scar, seemed deeply impacted by his passing. However, after Scar's death, several of his siblings, particularly his brother and sister, seemed to expect more from the trap god in the wake of their brother's death. Like I said, Gucci ain't help with shit. Like I said, Gucci ain't help with shit. 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 Fuck with you, Tommy. I don't give a fuck about no receipts. You know, punk ass, 10,000. Oh, they, they want to know. My brother, friend was 60K in all, bitch. 10K. It's still fuck you. It's still fuck you. It's still fuck you. What's, what's 10 to 60? 
What's 10 to 60? What is 10K to 60? If 10K ain't did shit, but buy a bitch and rappers and flowers, boo. This shit ain't here with nothing but bitch and rappers and flowers, boo. 10K ain't shit. My brother was way more worth, baby. My brother worth more than 10K. You bitch in the Quit playing with me. Quit playing with me. <laughs> yeah, Gucci son, 10,000. And it was a, uh, somebody else on another team. So it was 20,000 and all. Hey, look, y'all tag walk. You know, I probably was miss misinformed about but you hear me y'all y'all gotta realize this my brother like that my brother i ain't finna just just let no anything go on you hear me hold on who it is yeah he sent it he sent the 10k like he ain't have to do that you know what i'm saying he ain't have to do that day that he did that and Atlanta sent the other and other 10k but you hear me? I ain't trying to blemish your image, none of this shit, bro. I'm just, you hear me? That's just my brother. I'm going in how, how you would go about your brother. You I ain't, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to blemish your image, bro. You did your part. You did it. I was just saying, bro, you know what I'm saying? I know my brother would've wanted you at Inferno. You know what I'm saying? He love you, bro. On God, he love you. I don't have personal talks with my brother because he love you, bro. He ain't even just, you know, he ain't even just trying to blemish your enemy, none of this shit, bro. You know, a fool with you. Y'all for the hell trying not to laugh, fool, cause I'm trying to be serious, fool. Like, oh God, I'm trying to be serious. I'm trying to be serious, like, you know, you hear me? Like, I really don't even know what to say, but I ain't trying to blame your image. Like, you did your part, fool. Like, you did do your part, fool. It just, it just how this shit went, you hear me? Just look, it was some miscommunication and shit. You hear me? I just know my brother would want to do it in front of But you hear me? I, I understand that you had stuff going on. And, woo, woo, woo. and I do understand that it was people coming to you lying about how much. You hear me? I get all that. You hear me? It's just about how you went to block and You ain't have to block block my folk, though. You hear me? You ain't have to block my folk. You hear me? In contrast, Scar's father chose to focus on the opportunities that Gucci had provided to his son, someone Scar clearly admired. Instead of harboring resentment, he would show gratitude for the opportunities that he offered, as well as the role that Gucci would play in Big Scar's life and career. You know, so everything else out the window. Atlanta Records did what they did, y'all. Gucci sent 10. Atlantic sent 10. I paid the difference. What difference does it make my son gone still? What does it matter, you know? They didn't do that to, for, 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 they, they did that out they hard, and I appreciate them. You know, it, it, they didn't have to do it. First of all, I got to send shouts out to Lenny Records, man. They gave my son a big boy chance. Gucci, I got to send shouts out to Gucci too, y'all. Y'all might not like it, but I got to give my boy what he did, man. He gave my son a major, major chance, man. You know, I can't let y'all throw dude under the bus like, 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 like that. Come on now. The truth is the truth, man. The truth is the truth. I gave nobody permission to do that. 
Man to man, man, dude took care of what he need to take care of. Shouts out to Lord Ray, Carla, Luntrell. Gucci. Shouts out to y'all, man. Big ups to y'all, bro. We made it happen. We couldn't have did it without y'all. You hear me? But the truth is the truth. I don't know how this got out of control like this, y'all. It's ugly. Gucci did what he did. 100 is 100. You know. I'm the one ain't looking for nothing. I just want what rightfully belong to my son. I ain't asking for nothing else. I don't want nothing else. Appreciate y'all, Atlantic. With things like Perks, Zans, and Lean so closely tied to the hip hop community, the saddest part of this story to me might be that after having a severe car accident at 16 and getting shot just a few months before he was signed, Gucci Mane probably lost what was his best artist, not over a hip hop trend, but probably over a prior addiction stemming from those injuries. Not long after coming out of quarantine, many of us looked at Gucci Mane's new 1017 label as one of the strongest rosters in the industry with talents like Pooh Shiesty, Big Scar, Big Walk Dog, Fujiano, Enchanting and others. It was arguably the best label lineup at the time, rivaled only by CMG. However, just a few years later, things have changed drastically with the death of Big Scar and Enchanting and the incarcerations of Pooh Shiesty and Fujiano. A cabinet that once was full seems pretty empty now. As his artists dealt with challenge after challenge, not only did Joe Button question Gucci Mane's ability to lead as a CEO, but others in the industry would as well. With some of Joe's co-hosts praising Gucci for his impeccable track record for discovering and co-signing talents like Young Dolph, The Migos, Young Scooter, and Future, Joe took it a step further. He didn't just question Gucci's talent for finding stars. He questioned his ability to nurture and sustain them based on their backgrounds. Now, this brings me to the question that I wanted to pose to y'all. As the CEO of the label, Gucci Man is, of course, responsible for protecting his investments. But is he at all responsible for the depletion of his label's roster? And I got an even better question for y'all. Is Big Scar the best artist that Gucci Man has ever discovered or brought to the mainstream? And if not, who do y'all think it is? With artists that been under the 1017 umbrella like Waka, OJ, Pooh Shiesty, Hood Rich Pablo Juan, amongst others with so many different variations of the 1017 label throughout the years, excluding guys like Thug and Future. Who would y'all rank as the top five artists to come through or to be associated with the 1017 label? Now, y'all make sure y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all make sure y'all get in the comment box below. Y'all let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we need to tell, what we missed, what we got wrong, all of that. Definitely make sure y'all tap in with me directly. Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And until our next come up, y'all know the moves. Shades Popular. Salute the almighty mob.